So for many years, uh, there's been a sense that there's a lot of overlap between the child welfare system and the youth justice system. Um, and that sense comes from people who work in both systems, as well as from Indigenous leaders who have spoken about their concern that their children and youth are overrepresented in both systems. So what our study was able to do was to provide numbers about the exact amount of that overlap. When we looked at all kids who were ever in care of the child welfare system uh, in our study, what we found was that over one third of them ended up being charged uh, with a criminal offense as youth. And by the time they turned 21, almost half of them had been charged with an offense. When we looked at it a slightly different way and looked at all youth who had been charged between the ages of 12 and 17, we found that close to three quarters of those youth had some involvement with child and family services. Children involved in both systems are more likely to have challenges in education. Uh, they're more likely to have special education needs and much less likely to graduate from high school. In fact, when we followed these kids up to the time they were 21, we found that youth who had ever been in care during childhood were more likely to get accused of a crime than to complete high school. We also found that 70% of the kids who were involved in both the child welfare and the youth justice system had been diagnosed with a mental disorder, which suggests that their interactions with the justice system point to unaddressed mental health issues. There are all sorts of factors associated with being charged with a criminal offense as a youth. Whether you come from a low income neighborhood, whether you have a mental illness, or whether you're male or female. Even when we took into consideration all of those characteristics, the factor that had the strongest association with being charged was whether the youth had ever been in care of CFS. And the more times a child was taken into care, the more likely they were to be charged with a crime later on. It's important to note that in our study, we identified associations, but we were unable to determine causation. That is, even though we found a very strong association between being in care and youth criminal justice involvement, that does not necessarily mean that being in care caused the justice involvement. It's important to remember that it's not possible or even appropriate to try and lay blame with child welfare services or the youth criminal justice system. It would be an oversimplification of a problem that is complex, multifaceted, and based fundamentally in structural and societal factors that create barriers to uh, members of our community. What we can see from the results of this study is that we are failing children, uh, their families, and their communities. The care that we provide if you want to call it care, through the child welfare system and through the youth criminal justice system is not meeting the needs of these children. We can see from some of the results that have been listed that these are children who are not thriving. Children who are in the child welfare system uh, often find themselves being punished effectively for what is typical adolescent behavior. As noted, the administrative charges that are laid against young people who are in the care of child welfare services account for nearly half of the charges laid against these children. Um, these are not crimes. These are adolescents being adolescents, and we are criminalizing their behavior when what is most likely required for these children and young people is a trauma-informed approach to their care, both within the child welfare system and within the youth criminal justice system. The Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs and the First Nations Family Advocate Office were really pleased to be a part of this study. This is a very important study. It spells out what we knew and the connections between the child welfare system and the justice system. Uh, we knew that children in the child welfare system were more likely, and the report reveals that First Nations children in care are 24 times more likely to be caught up in the justice system than mainstream children. And so that's a staggering number. 
And even though First Nations children accounted for only 15% of the child population in Manitoba, they made up over half of all youth who were accused of a crime. This study provides the documentation of the overlap between the child welfare system and the youth criminal justice system that experts and community members have been talking about for decades. It provides the data that lets us know the extent of this overlap as called for in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's call to, calls to action number two and 30. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms um, provides protections and equality for all people. And in fact, uh, using similar legislation, the decision in the First Nation Child and Family Caring Society case underlines Canada's obligation to ensure that children are provided the services and the care they need through child welfare systems in this country. Additionally, Canada's signatory to the Convention on the Rights of the Child and the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Provision, uh, conventions which provide rights to children to live in freedom and security in their communities, with their families, to know their identities, their culture, and their languages. This study shows that we are not achieving those requirements. The findings of this study quantify what we already knew. Today, with the overrepresentation of First Nations children in the child welfare system, and with this report's help, we know that a lot of these children are being fed into the justice system. It's really a bleak reality. And when we look at the last 150 plus years with the steady policy of removing First Nations children from their families. There's a long history of genocide and colonial practice that have led to today and contribute to these staggering numbers re released in this report. So I think that um, a lot of times people need to see in black and white those realities. And there needs to be these mechanisms like this report that call for change and that hold uh, governments and those contributing to the system accountable for, for the reality that our young people are faced with. Our hope about this study is that providing information about the size and the scope of the overlap between the two systems, it will lead to greater action in reducing the number of children in care and reducing the number of youth who become involved in the justice system in Manitoba. And the kinds of actions we're talking about should include supporting families to prevent the kinds of challenges that result in kids being taken into care, empowering Indigenous people to deliver services that reflect their values and policies, and continuing to report on the overlap between the two systems.